incredibly excited to be working with Amy again. Um, you know, Amy's a winner. Uh, I knew that from the second she got to USC. Um, I mean, also before that, I mean, look at her resume. It speaks for itself, but um, when she coached us, she was also, you know, we had the luxury of getting her to train a little bit with us, and she was, you know, the most fantastic example of what a professional player is, and I know that she's gonna bring that um, those things that she brought to USC and things that she brought in her career to coaching us here. And I'm, you know, we've already gotten a gl little glimpse of it and it's exactly what I expected. And I expect that she's going to turn this team around pretty quickly. And I'm really excited about it. Where do you play on the field and where do you hope to bring Taylor to the team? Um, I play a variety of positions. Um, I'm a wing back on either side or um, anywhere in the midfield. Um, but no matter where I am playing, I'm a combination player. I get out of tight spaces and I'm a workhorse. So it's about, you know, getting everybody, all 11 players on the same page. That's where I come in. So I'm really excited about that. What's been like getting to know the other players? Did you have any prior connections with any of the other teams? Um, I've known Ali Sentnor forever. Um, I was part of the youth US for a little bit when I was younger, um, before moving to the Canadian Federation. And uh, so I've known Ali for you know six years. Not that we've been in constant connection, but it was it has it's been amazing to be you know reunited with her. Um, everybody else is pretty brand new, but also that's the case for everyone else. And everyone's been delightful. It's been a great environment. I'm really thankful for that. Have you ever had this kind of situation before, where it's you know 24 players coming from <coughs> being scattered to one group? Not really, no. It's a very unique situation, um, but that's what's been probably the most exciting for me and I think the other draftees is um, there's a lot of draft players. There's a lot of girls my age or at, le at least pretty close. Um, you know, we're all kind of coming from the same or a similar situation and, uh, you know, there's nothing prior set up. Everything that we're doing day by day is based on us and that is extremely special and I'm really excited about it. Um, um, I have been to Utah before. Um, we played, uh, when I was at SC, we played University of Utah, and then this past season we came to play BYU. It's a little fresh. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, Brecken and I were joking about it, you know, pretty early on, um, but, uh, you know, it's beautiful here. Um, I know that you know, the community is really invested in the soccer program here, which is always amazing. So I'm really excited about the environment that we're about to play in. Um, if it's anything like BYU, I'm very excited about the crowd that we're going to get. I don't know if you're aware of um, the Royals' previous iteration averaged about 10,000 fans a game. That's amazing. In 2018 and 2019, so we're second only to Portland. So wow. We're hoping to take that a few steps further where that actually get going again. Reference the community. Obviously, mm -hmm. women's soccer at Utah BYU is high school level. It's massive yeah. in Utah. Um, what are the kinds of things I guess and it might be a little bit of reverse question, but in in what are some of the ways in which you guys can connect with the community and kind of help uh, help reinstate the Royals, if you will? Yeah, I think that with the position that we're in, um, especially as I mentioned, like we have a lot of younger players. Um, and something that I'm sure others would agree, but for me, something that I've always, um, you know, loved about playing in college or playing, you know, uh, you know, at least close to the community or something, is that, you know, the younger girls look up to you and they come and they watch you play. I mean, even, so I grew up in Seattle and I grew up watching Chris Schlock play and I still watch her now. And uh, to be playing, you know, against her is gonna be weird and <laughs> really exciting. But you know, to be able to uh, you know connect with those communities and um, you know specifically the young um, female athletes, I hope that we can inspire them, and I hope that we get to connect with them, um, you know, like personally and you know as a team. Nice to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you. Meet Thank you. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Of course. You were born and raised in the U.S., but your parents are Canadian. Correct? Both of them. Yes. And because of your drive and your parents, you both national team programs. Yes. And the, and the U, U 
Yeah, uh, with the U.S., I was with the I was with them for two, almost just short of two years. Um, I can't quite remember the U, whatever. But um, I think from ages like maybe late 15s to 17, and then right around then, um, you know, I had a, a little injury, so then it took a little bit. But um, and then I took a break, and then I came. Uh, then right around halfway through college, I joined the Canadian Federation for the tennis industry. So I wanted to preface my question with that, so thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, so because of your drive, because of your parents, you had that opportunity, but um, your premier club director, Bernie Jones, I read oh, he yeah. will hold you as the standard for young girls to say, if you want to make that leap, if you want to make the jump to the international level, oh, yeah. this is the individual you should be looking at. So I'm just curious, tell me what, what your drive looks like to you, where you think it's going to take you with the Royals, mm -hmm. just how much of a fire you have within you? Well, I, first of all, I didn't know that, um, that he, you know, referenced me. That's, um, you know, obviously an honor. Um, and whenever I go back to Seattle, you know, to see, like, you know, the younger generations, you know, ask some questions, things like that, it's always, you know, super cute and super fun. Um, but in terms of my drive and what that looks like, I would say the same thing that I, you know, would tell my college team before I left is that every single day you make choices and they're either going to help you or they're going to hurt you so as many choices correct choices that we can make in a day it i think all goes into your drive how much do you want it and i think when we play um and i think when we play exactly i think how amy kind of sees this is we have 25 girls i think and I, you can tell right in the beginning you know we're doing testing we're doing, they all want it and that's, we all have that drive. And, um, you know, that's, I think, also kind of the recruiting mindset of like, you know, you pick 20, if you have 25 people that are willing to battle and to have that drive every single day that are, you know, gonna make those correct choices every single day, I think we're gonna be in really good shape. So for me, it's like, how much in a day can I do to make myself better, just a little bit every day um, for what I want. It was good. I was really excited about it. You know, we were, uh, you know, we all just got here, so the altitude's, uh, you know, always an adjustment. But I was so impressed with all of us. Um, so I'm really excited. Yeah. Have you had a chance to get together with some of your teammates and maybe coaches and talk about personal goals and team goals going into the season? Um, not with the coaches yet, but uh, you know, they're doing their own thing for now. But uh, the team, yeah, every second we can, every meal that we've had. Uh, we're talking about, you know, okay, like, you know, where do you play? How do you like to play? Uh, I bet if we go here, we can do this. You know, it's, it's all we're talking about right now, especially when we're getting to know each other and how we like to play. It's really good to, you know, have those conversations really on early on, but I think mostly we're just excited. So we just, you know, keep talking about it. <laughs> what do you feel like is, is most important right now as you get to know the, the entire group? Is it the, the on-field working together and the, the tactical side of the game? Mm -hmm. interests and motivations in life so that you know there's that that locker room and, and the, the presence there yeah I would say considering you know like at this point we've all been on a lot of different teams and a lot of different environments and I think for a lot of years I would have said that we need to get on the field and we need to make sure that I know where she wants the ball and this and that and whatever and all those like the technical side of things and making sure that we know each other on that in that sense. But I think now I would say it's really off the field. I think it's it's going to be, you know, making those connections because I think the most successful environments and teams that I've been a part of, you want to work for the person next to you. And that only comes if you know me and you know and I know her. You know what I mean? So I think in these next couple of weeks, especially considering, you know, they're all good. We're all good. We know that. We don't need, that doesn't need to be proven to me. I know they're good, you know? It just, and, you know, not that they need to prove themselves interpersonally, but um, just how important that part is. I think that's my priority, and I think that's our, our priority right now is, um, you know, making those connections and, you know, going the extra mile to, to get to know somebody, especially when it's such a small team. Growing up in Seattle and then playing at USC, you came in in a uh, big, long winter coat. Have you played anywhere <laughs> in a climate like I mean obviously it's rain today but mm -hmm. a predominantly cold climate like it's going to be the 
Seattle? Um, not like this, no. But you would be surprised how cold it is in Seattle. In December, and we're crazy over there. You'll ask anybody. We don't wear jackets. We're in shorts and um, you know our our t-shirt, and we're calling it a day, and it's hailing, and it's 7 p.m. at night. Like we're crazy over there. We don't need. We don't wear jackets between our cars and the school because it's right there. We'll just go on a jog. So, you know, I'm hoping my Seattle, uh, you know, roots kick in and my Canadian blood starts pumping because you know. I know it's going to be cold, but I'm really, I, I think it's going to give us energy. It's going to be good. So we're kind of on the quilt topic of the new shirts. Uh -huh. They are beautiful. Oh, you can't tell a whole lot mm -hmm. what's, what's your impression? I, my impression is impressed. I mean, I, everything that, you know, we've, you know, uh, gotten so far and, like, seen has been, like, the highest quality. Like, they, it is very obvious that, we're being invested in. I'm really excited about that. You know, there's um, not a lot of programs, even in the world, especially for women's soccer, that are doing this. And so I'm honored to be a part of it. They look amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, okay. Thanks, guys. Nice to meet you.